Hi everybody! Today I will show you how to load a CSV database with Python, how to organize all its data and then plot it as a graph with Wayscript. We will use some cryptocurrency data just to make this tutorial extra useful, so if you guys are ready, let's start! We will begin by downloading the database from CryptoDataDownloads.com link is in the description. We will use the Gemini exchange data and more specifically the daily worth of Bitcoin in US dollars. And right away we will just drag and drop this file into our script. And this is just a brand new empty script that I've prepared in advance. So we will add a Python step and we will click on view code. We will get rid of all the placeholder text and we will begin with all the module imports we'll need for this plot. We will, of course, import CSV and then from date time, we'll import date time just so our date formatting looks much, much better. And since we'll be using pandas to plot our graph, we will need to import pandas as PD. And to make this work, we will also need the matplot library we can just simply add it to our requirements text file. We'll type mat plot live and we got it. Now back in our script, we will access our CSV file by typing with open where the first parameter is always the name of our file, which we can copy from here. And we will paste it as a string. And the second parameter would be the mode of opening this file. In our case, that's a read mode, which we can indicate with R. And lastly, we will call this expression CSV underscore file. And we can go ahead and read this file by typing CSV reader equals CSV dot reader. And inside the round brackets, we specify our CSV file, which is this expression from above. And right away, we will convert this raw data into a proper pandas data frame. We will do this by typing df as in data frame equals pd dot data frame in camel case and inside the round brackets, our CSV reader from above. And we will, of course, print the first couple lines from this data frame by typing print df dot head so let's run it. Cool. And we see that the titles of each and every one of our columns are saved on row one of our data frame. Let's take a closer look at those titles by typing data frame, I lock in the index of one, in the row of one more specifically, and we will rerun everything. And now we have a much better understanding with which data we're dealing with. In my case, I will target the highs and the lows of Bitcoin stored on columns four and five. And additionally, I will also target the date because we will need it for our X axis. And we will begin with the highs on column four. So let's just print them first. So right away, we notice two different things. Our data has 2,025 different values, but because our first two values are not really integers, we will ignore them. So we have 2,023 different values. Additionally, it looks like we are dealing with floating point numbers in terms of data type. However, looks can be deceiving. So let's have a quick look at the type of this particular value. So we will type type. And instead of targeting the entire column, we will target the second row of this column. And let's have a look. And we see that our data has the type of string. This is not a floating point number. So we would have to convert our data into numeric values before we can plot it. We will do this with a list comprehension. So in the next line, we will type high equals a list comprehension where we only keep the float instance of our value for value in data frame in column four, starting from the second value and up. And we can do the exact same thing for our lows. So we will just copy this line of code. We'll paste it underneath and refactor high to low and column four to column five. 
and we will only need to figure out the formatting of our dates. Now, to save some time, I highly recommend to copy this command from the description of the video and paste it right below our lows. And I'm going to quickly explain it. So what we've done in this list comprehension is we set the formatting of each and every one of our date values so it would match the year, month and day structure. And we applied it on the entire column of dates, excluding the first two rows, which do not store numeric data. And once we finished pre-processing our data, we can go ahead and plot it. For this, we will type my data equals pd.dataframe once again, but this time inside the round brackets, we will include two values. The first value will represent the y-axis and the second value will represent the x-axis. So for the y-axis, we have two different plots. We have the highs and the lows. For this, we will create a new dictionary where the first key would be high and it will equal to our high list of values. The second key, as you may guess, would be our lows and they will equal to our low list. And since our X axis will only include the dates, we will just type them in. In the next line of code, we will plot this data frame by typing my plot equals my data dot plot. And the first parameter we specify would be the kind of plot we're looking for. So in our case, that would be line because we are interested in a line graph. And I'm just making sure that my head is not going to block the code because I'm about to add many different settings to our plot. So first we will set the grid to true and we will set the figure size to 16 inch by 12 inch, then we can set our titles. So our main title would be Bitcoin value in US dollars over time, which will make our Y label be value in US dollars and our X label to be date. And what makes a lot of sense in these type of plots is to rotate our date label so it appears vertically and not horizontally. We can do this by typing rot as in rotation, 90 as in 90 degrees. Additionally, we will set the font size to small and we will spread our X ticks along the entire scope of our data. We will do this by typing X ticks equals a range that begins at zero and it's 2023 because if you guys remember, that's the length of our data. And lastly, we will increment it, let's say by 20, just to make sure that we're leaving a nice gap in between our date labels. Now to finish off this very long line of code, we will add a get underscore figure command, which will allow us to save this plot inside our project files. So in the next line of code, we will type my plot dot save fig as in save figure. And inside the round brackets, we will name our file btc dot pdf. And now if we run this script, we will see a brand new PDF file on the left hand side of our script, we will download this file and have a quick look. And we see that our data appears, unfortunately, in a reversed order. Now, from a chronological point of view, it makes sense to keep the 2017 values on this side and the current values of 2021 on this side. So let's quickly fix it inside our script. And we can simply do this by reversing the indices of our high, low and date lists. We will do this by adding square brackets, colon, colon, minus one to the end of each of our list comprehensions. We will, of course, copy it. We'll paste it here and we will also paste it in the end of our date. And actually, let's filter some of that data just so we can focus on the last 365 days. We will do this by slicing index minus 366 
up until the very end of our data. And we can copy this and of course paste it both for our lows and our dates. And we will also need to refactor our range so it only includes 366 values. And this will allow us to reduce the gap, let's say to 12. Now let's go ahead and rerun our script and we will download our PDF file once again. We see that our data now appears in the correct order and we can also understand it better because now we are only plotting the last 365 values rather than the entire 2023 of them. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will see you very soon.